If you've been in the dating world, you probably know that there is a wide variation in how frequently people communicate in between dates. You may be wondering, is it a red flag if someone doesn't communicate a lot in between dates? Especially if you've been in toxic relationships, you may be wondering if this is a red flag for abuse or mistreatment because if that was your experience, of course you'd wanna to try to avoid another toxic relationship in the future. So today I have a question from the subreddit Dating Over 30. It's one of my favorite subreddits and every so often a question comes on that I, I have to just make a video about, I have to talk about it. So here's today's question. I've been on two dates with someone I'm very interested in. We have great conversation, I think we have great chemistry, and I really want to know them better. Between dates, we have basically zero communication though. I recently asked about it, and the answer they gave was understandable, but when I said that I like them and enjoy flirting and more communication, nothing has changed. I can't even push about it because they just don't respond. I don't mind holding, get to know you stuff for in person. It's actually kind of nice to have things to talk about. But I think responding to my texts 16 hours later just isn't going to work for me. How do I convey this? So the answer to the question, is this a red flag? I would say no. This doesn't indicate that a person might harm you, that they're not communicating frequently in between dates. So I wouldn't consider this a red flag for abuse, but I would consider it a sign that this person could be emotionally unavailable. I consider that somewhat of a different sign. So let me talk a little bit more about that here. Here's where I differ from typical dating advice. So now I'm really big on communicating when there's something going on in a relationship that you don't like and you would like it to be different. But in this situation, I wouldn't even go there. Something this big, something like basic communication styles is not something that I would request to be different. Honestly, I would just walk away from this situation. So here's, here's my thinking on this. I personally, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my experience here. So I personally value communication and I'm not the only one here. I think many, many people also do value having a partner who wants to communicate with you, who you don't need to ask to, for them to text you. They just do it because they naturally want to talk to you and you want to talk to them. It feels really good when you have that dynamic. So if I have to encourage someone in the very beginning of dating, to talk to me in between dates, then I really know at that point that we are not compatible. I know this because I have tried to make those relationships work. I have tried to like pull communication out of people and it's painful and it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. I would tell you to do it if it worked, but it doesn't work in this case. When someone is not naturally reaching out to you in between dates and you value that, you value more frequent communication, this is a major incompatibility. So again, I was in these relationships where I, I felt like I had to pry communication from people and it was not a happy relationship. And so I wouldn't wish this type of relationship on anyone. I needed someone who wanted to communicate more frequently not every single second of the day, but at least once a day when we were dating, not unreasonable at all. That's what I like and it was really important to me. So that's what I looked for. So sure, you could communicate to this person and say, you know, I, I feel really good when you message me in between dates. Could, could you do that? Are you able to do that? And they might say, oh yeah, I can do that and they'll do it a little bit, but what I have noticed is in the long term, people who aren't on that same page with you, they can't keep that up. And the minute they get comfortable, that communication will drop off and you'll be left feeling pretty lonely. Again, that's not what I would choose to do. I would choose to walk away from this situation if what I personally valued was communication. And it sounds like the person asking this question does. Now, if this were younger Lindsay, younger version of me, she would have tried to make it work. 
She would have tried to make it work because she was really attracted to this guy. The chemistry was great. We were having fun in person. She, really me, I would have tried to suppress my need for communication because of the intense attraction and chemistry that I felt for this person. I would have just ignored it. I would have been like, no, I, I can do this. I can, I can make it work. Was I happy? No, no, I absolutely was not. Because I was so attracted to someone and I just felt drawn in by who they were, I would deny my needs. I would deny the importance communication was for me. So now in my more recent years when I was dating, once I realized that communication was truly very important to me, I would not waste my time on people like this who just didn't hold that same value. Not that there's something wrong with this, it's not. There's probably people out there who would be okay with this level of communication, who wanted a more distant type of dynamic. But I had to be honest with myself and realize that wasn't me. I was not that type of person. I valued communication and so when I was confronted with this type of behavior, I didn't stick around for it because I knew what happened when I did. And this actually came about because I was on a healing journey. The more I loved and accepted myself, the more I came to accept that I do have these needs. I do have this value of being with someone who wants to communicate and that's perfectly okay. I realized it was perfectly reasonable and I didn't have to try to make it work with people who weren't on the same page as me. I could leave those situations and find someone who was. And for a while, a part of me didn't believe that that was out there actually. I had a lot of people in my life who really did not want to communicate at that point, but I knew that I had met people in the past. Like I, I knew people existed, men in particular, that did want to communicate. I knew like one or two of them. So I thought, okay, there, there's got to be more out there. And there were, there's lots of men who like to communicate. And so that's what I did. I found one of those men. So in particular, in this scenario that I read, this person has already communicated that. They've already told this person, I really like it when you communicate more frequently and she got nothing from this person. So in this particular situation, there really is nowhere even to go here. If you value communication, your best bet is to leave a scenario like this. Again, if you're someone who wants more communication, this is not your guy. His lack of response is a very clear response that, yeah, th this is all he's got. This is all he has to give. This is the dynamic that he's comfortable with. And he's kind of saying like, this is who I am, take it or leave it. And if you're not okay with it, exercise your option to leave it. You're m going to be much better off finding a person who values communication even if the chemistry is amazing, even if you're super attracted to this person, in the long run, what sustains a healthy relationship long term, what keeps it happy is communication. I'm not just saying this, you guys, research has shown this. Unless you're somebody who doesn't really value communication, you could make a relationship like that work. But if you're like most of us and you want good communication, the intense chemistry and an intense attraction you might be feeling for someone in the beginning, this is not gonna make up for the lack of communication in the long term. But if, if you wanna compromise on this and go for someone like this because you really value that attraction and that chemistry, that's totally fine, go for it. It's not what I would do, but that's okay if that's the choice you wanna make. If you don't really value that very much, no problem here, go for it. But if, again, if you do value communication, this person is very clearly communicating with his lack of response that he is not up for what you're looking for. And again, as a reminder, there are men, there are people out there who like to communicate just as much as you do. And maybe you've met a bunch of people, a bunch of men lately who haven't seemed like that. Just because that's been the case doesn't mean that it's, you're never going to find that. There are plenty of men out there like that, plenty of partners out there like that. And if you value communication, like I said, do not waste your time with situations like this. So if you guys wanna know what some actual red flags are when you're dating, click here and click here to subscribe. I come out with new videos every week. 
And also, if you want daily support, follow me on Instagram at livingfreefindinglove.